on the, on the venture capital front, indeed dollars are down investing, but uh, my interpretation of this is we've entered one of these rare periods of normalcy. There was a period of time in about 1999 when, uh, at the height of the internet boom, there was about $100 billion of venture capital going into inconsequential dot-com dot startups, uh, most of which failed. There were one or two, like Google, which prospered. So I don't think we should take the amount of money, per se, as an indicator of the quality of companies that would be built. For my own partnership, Kleiner Perkins, in the last year, so actually since the start of this year, we've made six investments. They've not all been smart grid, but they've been in, in uh, clean energy. And I, and I think one of the things that'll uh, uh, move this market forward is uh, when we have what I call the Netscape moment, an IPO of a company that captures the imagination of in, investors and, uh, and consumers alike. And I think we're very likely to see that, uh, that next year in this whole class of investments. Um, for, the, uh, for the question, let's, let's go to some of these policy questions if, if, if we can. And Raj, I know you've been involved in speaking for regulators and, and uh, government officials about privacy and safeguards. What are the big thoughts that matter for when it comes to privacy on the smart grid? Sure. So, so part of it is, of course, technical. Um, can you provide the technology that securely protects privacy in terms of encryption and, and all of that? That's all available today and, and being used. The second is sort of a legislative, and there is a work underway to ensure that at legislative level we have um, defined exactly who owns the data, namely the consumer, uh, and, and how that's kept private. I think the real issue with privacy is not how the data will be protected, because we can do that. The issue is the extent to which, and it actually relates to that third party question, uh, the data will be transmitted to other parties. Uh, and there, fundamentally, I think it will just come down to value. And my analogy there is OnStar. So there, they have many, many people have OnStar today uh, and actually provide OnStar with a whole lot of data about exactly where they are at any moment. They do that because they get value in return from that. And the same thing will happen with energy. Well, while you have the stage here, would you? Talk about when you think you're going to see um, citywide deployment of electric vehicle smart grid. So um, I suspect that electric vehicles will probably start um, more as sort of fleet and, and organized um, uh, deployments rather than sort of random residential deployments across cities. So that sort of concentration and, and control. Uh, will, will be a natural thing for, for how electric vehicles evolve. The first sort of major, you know, city-wide, um, I frankly don't know, you may have a better, better idea than I do. I think, uh, I don't know of city-wide experiments, but uh, I, I think it's, we'll see them soon enough. And I, I think it's going to be the Nissan Leaf that's going to drive the very early deployments, and it'll be where those are concentrated. Uh, let's turn to the uh, question of uh, of, of policies that are going to accelerate the deployment of solar and wind, particularly policies as affect the smart grid. And uh, I'm going to start this and, and then ask for Raj to help with an answer as well. I think one of the things that's important for policymakers and people who care about this field to uh, try to do is to get the utilities aligned as partners in, in, in moving us towards a clean energy future whether that's conservation or adoption of, or efficiencies and adoption of technology to do that. We should never lose sight of the fact that utilities have 100% market share, they have huge cash flows, and they have enormously uh, low cost of capital. And today's incentives for utilities, by the large, still reward them for the more electrons that are being sold. So whether you're talking about decoupling or specific programs for efficiency, uh, deployment of solar, deployment of wind, one of the perspectives we ought to have after Tuesday's elections is, rightly or wrongly, it's going to get harder to get new things done in Washington, D.C. That doesn't mean that's the case at the state level or at the regulatory levels. And, and, and I think far too few entrepreneurs really appreciate uh, the power that they have in the, the U.S. Uh, energy system. Uh, all the action really is, a, is at the, the, the PUC when it comes to uh, that kind of rate gain and investment. Raj, your view of policies for solar and wind that involve smart grid? So I think that's right. There's a tendency to think that grand sweeping federal policies make a difference, and, and they certainly set a certain tone for what's going to happen, but in the end it is state by state um, and, and where it matters. From, from a 
policy perspective, it, it really has everything to do with um, what I call the tobacco company problem. Um, we, we have sort of legal tobacco, uh, yet the tobacco companies essentially are encouraged to spend part of their uh, revenues on anti-smoking programs. Uh, that is largely what we're asking utilities to do in a way without a framework for understanding how that affects their business. So there are some complicated policy questions there about how to encourage utilities to, to encourage those things more, um, but not an insurmountable problem. I don't want to dwell too much on policy. In fact, I want to make sure we close on some technologies and, and, and innovation areas. But this question about Denmark really sparked my imagination. It has to do with a campaign I wasn't aware of at Denmark to eliminate all use of fossil fuels uh, in 50 years. And uh, Denmark's a singular example because as a nation, they decided in the 1970s that uh, uh, they were going to drive as far as they could to low carbon generation of, uh, of electricity and put in place policies, both incentives and, and if you will, uh, uh, taxes on carbon-based energies. What happened because of that is really, I think, illustrative for what we can and should do in the United States, and for that matter, nations ought to around the world. Uh, the creation of local markets and local incentives uh, caused them to create uh, an array of suppliers of these technologies, uh, foremost among which became Vestas. And uh, Vestas is either the number one or number two supplier of wind turbines still to this day. And a couple of years ago in 2008, when unemployment in the United States skyrocketed, it remained uh, remarkably low in Denmark because the exports of these wind turbines were quite so high. Denmark, uh, a nation with a, a, a population smaller than my home state, the state of Missouri. So, it shows, for me, it's a very good example of what innovation can do uh, when coupled with policy to uh, really strengthen an economy and, and, and have everybody in that country therefore benefit. Uh, Raj, I want to turn to innovation for a moment and, and ask you, from your perspective, where's the frontier for innovation? Not the here and now, but look out in the three to five year period of time. If you were advising entrepreneurs, would you tell them to work in, in software and power electronics and in, in what fields? Yes. Yes, um, to all the so, so, so I think, uh, you know, a lot of what's happened over the last sort of five years is that a variety of technologies, whether they're particular kinds of renewable technologies or in particular network infrastructure technologies, have gotten to the point where they can actually reliably, securely, and cost effectively provide benefits. So what's happening is a massive wave of infrastructure deployment. But it's not infrastructure for infrastructure's sake. Um, the whole goal at that point, once that infrastructure starts to get deployed and is deployed, is to build applications on top of it. So when people say, where is the innovation in, or, or what are the areas of innovation for particular applications? Well, it's everywhere because we're just getting started on that set of applications, whether that's in response, uh, in some management, EV, those sorts of things. So all of those things are going to be a petri dish of sort of experimentation or innovation over the next few years as we try to settle on what are the right um, answers and most effective answers. So in a way, the whole sort of cycle of innovation and, and entrepreneurs entering the market just getting started really have barely scratched the surface. Uh, utilities are often thought of by entrepreneurs as sluggish, slow, not forward looking or leaning. Uh, what's your advice to entrepreneurs about because you've done this and successfully about dealing with uh, utilities as customers or partners. Yeah, so the, so the most important thing I think is to start by not believing that. Um, I, I think that uh, there's a tendency to think coming from outside the industry that we've discovered a couple of lost tribes in the Amazon and they're called utilities and regulators and I showed up with a flashlight and I thought I was shooting light out of my hands. Um, it's really not like that at all. Uh, as I said, what utilities have been doing is being very sort of judicious about technology. They need reliability because your cable, if your cable network goes down in this American Idol, your utility network goes down, you might freeze it. So reliability is an important thing. They need security because if your, if your utility network goes down, you might freeze it. Out. And they need cost effectiveness because in the end, you and I pay for all of this uh, and, and they need to be diligent about how they do that. When you get that combination of factors and they actually get something that's proven, reliably works, um, they will basically be a path to your door. And that's been our experience and the experience of a number of other companies as this market has been taking off. What's been re 
required is for the technology to meet that inflection point, to basically be reliable, proven, secure, and cost. Once you do that, there's really no problem with the market.